Welcome to another new video of interesting math problem on our channel Math Solutions for You. Please do like, share, comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. A and B are two independent events with A more probable than B. The probability that exactly one of these two events occur is 0.5 and probability that they both occur simultaneously is 0 0.08. What is the probability of event A? We start with letting the probabilities of the two events A and B be X and Y respectively. And since the event A is given as more probable than B, then that means that A has a higher probability. So X will be greater than Y. Next, we take the help of Venn diagram to basically understand better, you know, what those probabilities that are given in the problem, like the probability of simultaneous occurrence of both events and uh, probability that exactly one of these two events occur, what do those probabilities actually mean uh, in terms of the Venn diagram? So in the Venn diagram, it's very typical to represent the universal set by a rectangle. So that's basically the entire, you know, possible, the entire universe, right? And then within that, we basically have these two events A and B, that are represented by the circles. The event A is represented by the red circle and the event B is represented by the green circle. And in this particular problem, the area outside the two circles that's not included in any one of those two circles, uh, so that's the area I have indicated in stripes. So, so that area is not of interest in this particular problem. So let's just focus on the circular areas and the different uh, sections of the circular areas. Now, the event of joint occurrence of A and B or simultaneous occurrence of the events A and B is actually represented by the common area between the two circles. That's the area of intersection or area of overlap. And... In notation of set theory, that event is represented by A intersection B. And the probability of A intersection B, in this case, is simply equal to the product of the two probabilities, PA and PB. This is a result which we cannot take in general to be true. PA intersection B is not equal to PA multiplied by PB in general. But in this particular problem, since it's given that A and B are two independent events, we can take advantage of this relationship between the probability of intersection of two independent events and their, uh, you know, individual probabilities. In this case, PA intersection B is equal to PA multiplied by PB. And since we have taken PA to be X and PB to be Y, this comes to XY. And like I said, if I am to mark the Venn diagram, this will be basically the, the common area between the two circles. So that's XY. And remember, this is given in the problem to be 0 0.08. So that's the probability of simultaneous occurrence of those two events. And that's the common area between those two circles uh, that I have marked. So that represents the probability of the two events occurring simultaneously. So what is the portion of the circle A that's not a part of this common area of overlap between the two circles. We know that the entire red circle is X, 
right? So if we now just subtract the common area, we basically get this x minus xy. And this is the part of the event A that does not include that area of overlap. So this basically represents the probability of event A occurring alone without the occurrence of event B. And in a similar way, the part of the green circle that's not included in that common area of intersection between the two circles, that will be y minus xy. Because we know that the green circle, the total of it is y. So that's the probability of the event B. Now, if we exclude xy, this is a common, common area, the area of overlap, we are left with y minus xy. And that represents the probability of event B occurring alone without occurrence of event A, because we are just taking that portion of the event B that does not include event A. So y minus xy represents the probability of event B occurring alone without occurrence of event A. And now we can answer the question, what is the probability that exactly one of these two events occur? So that will be simply the sum of x minus xy and y minus xy, which are basically the individual probabilities of event A occurring alone without occurrence of event B, which is x minus xy, and the probability of event B occurring alone without the event A occurring, which is y minus xy. So we sum those two up and we get the probability that exactly one event occurs. And if we sum that up, that comes to x plus y minus 2 times xy. And this is given in the problem to be 0.5. So we can write this x plus y minus 2xy is equal to 0.5. And now we basically have, you know, two equations in x and y, right? So we have this one as one equation, the other equation is uh, xy. So we, one of the first things that we can do is we can substitute, you know, xy here because we know that xy is equal to 0 0.08. So we do that substitution and from this, it's easy to obtain what x plus y will be. So x plus y is equal to 0.66. And we also know that xy is 0 0.08. Just to get rid of the fractions, let's represent capital X as 100 times small x and capital Y as 100 times small y. So then we can write this. Sum of capital X and capital Y is 66, and then the product of capital X and capital Y is 800. So this is just a means to make our life easier uh, to deal with, you know, instead of dealing with fractions, we're dealing with integers now. So we basically have these two equations. X plus Y is 66, and XY is 800. And further, we can write 800 simply as 50 multiplied by 16. And from this, it's easy to guess that the values of x and y will be 50 and 16, because x plus y, if you add 50 and 16, it comes to 66. So this is an easy way of guessing what the solution would be. And if you don't want to guess, if you want to take more time, you can of course, solve this as a, as a quadratic equation. We can basically, you know, substitute y is equal to 66 minus x and basically have the product of x and 66 minus x is equal to 800 and then solve the quadratic equation from there. But this one is pretty easy to guess what the solution would be. And since x is the, is the larger quantity, Right, so we have basically, you know, 
two possible solutions and we know the numbers are going to be 50 and 16 but since we know that that capital x is greater because you know we know that small x was greater than small y so since we took capital x as 100x and capital y is 100y 100 times small y we know that capital x is greater than capital y so it's easy to derive the conclusion from here that that capital x will be 50 because that's the larger of the two two numbers right so that's going to be 50 and if capital x is 50 then small x which is the probability of the event a is simply capital x divided by 100 which is uh, 50 divided by 100 and that comes to 0.5 so the correct answer in this case will be option a 0.5